Hey guys and welcome. This is the last video in the deployed workout series covering what I have found to be a worthwhile split to implement while I'm here in the desert. I've already covered the three powerlifting days and one of my cardio days. So today's workout is going to be the other cardio day that I schedule into the week and the lifting will be focused on the shoulders. I mentioned in the other cardio video that I like to tap into CrossFit workouts for my cardio despite the fact that CrossFit is not synonymous with cardio or more conventional high intensity interval training, but I like to use CrossFit workouts as a sort of high intensity interval training and also reap the benefits from the other disciplines that CrossFit emphasizes. Today I will be performing another CrossFit workout as a means of doing just that and getting a little more cardio centric activity into my workout schedule without relying on more conventional high intensity interval training or low intensity steady state cardio work. Although Though those would also be effective options that I could implement and are options at anyone's disposal depending on their preferences. After I hit that CrossFit workout, I am going to go through each of the shoulder lifts in some detail, just like I've been doing to talk about each individual lift. There's not much more to discuss on that front, so I'm gonna get over to the gym and I will move into the voiceover. These videos are already heavier on technicality than entertainment, so I'm not going to make that more pronounced by showing an additional 10 minutes of today's CrossFit or cardio work. One thing I will say that I didn't mention last time is that I've recently started putting the cardio work at the end of the weight training for the day, or just doing it at a different time of day altogether in the hopes of ensuring I've got my recovery timing dialed in to focus on the strength and size training specifically. If you watch the video with the lengthier cardio discussion, which I hope you did, you'll probably recognize how that works with my philosophy of managing energy demands from cardio commensurate with specific goals. For the shoulder work this week, I start with the seated military press on a machine or barbell, or the standing military press with a barbell depending depending on what's available at the time in the gym. I'll also utilize the machine from time to time if I'm feeling any shoulder impingement because of the easy implementation of a neutral grip like I'm doing here, which removes the internal rotation element of the lift and thus reduces stress on the shoulder joint. You could also accomplish a neutral grip with dumbbells for this lift with the same effect. I prefer the barbell or dumbbells if they're available, but the machine is more than workable. I've seen progress by emphasizing compound lifts. I still obviously implement isolation movements as you've seen, but they aren't in my mind the paramount lifts of whatever day I'm executing more complementary than primary. Trainees can overall expect to see more size and strength gains by targeting compound movements. A study that I've linked below from the International Journal of Sports Medicine is one of many that has demonstrated the positive relationship between compound movements and human growth hormone and testosterone production in the human body, which each directly relate to consistent gains. Despite plenty of myths about women and weight training, females also ought to seek out this correlation and incorporate heavy compound resistance training because of its many benefits, including fat loss, but that's probably a topic for another video. The military or shoulder press is just such a compound movement, so my routine isn't complete without it. My standard reverse pyramid structure of 8, 10, and 12 reps applies to this lift as well. I then move to dumbbell lateral side raises as one of the isolation movements for the shoulders, targeting specifically the middle or the side delts. I'll do the same reverse pyramid rep count that I mostly stick to. Throughout the movement, I focus on keeping the elbow bend static. I don't want to change the elbow position as I raise the weights and I'll work to control the negative of the movement to maximally stress the delts. I'm also mentally focused on not developing a shrugging motion to start or end the lift, since this exercise isn't intended to become a lift for the traps at the cost of the middle deltoid involvement. There are benefits to strong shoulders overall that I'm seeking, but I'll say that this lift in particular is probably more related to my aesthetic, since that cap shoulder look is a staple in the male physique. Similarly, but to target the front or interior delts instead, I'll move on to the front dumbbell raise. I find it more efficient to do these one arm at a time just because of the size of standard dumbbells and potential collision conflicts and the ability to focus on complete range of motion per shoulder. Once again, I'll do the reverse pyramid for the numbering and once again, I'll resist on the negative to cash in on the full benefit of the lift. One element of this lift that I'm considering modifying is increasing the thumb upward rotation of my arm as I approach the height of the lift, which should once again diminish the risk of shoulder impingement. I find it's important not to neglect the complete set of raises for overall shoulder growth in order to avoid any deficiencies in the appearance and performance of my shoulders should one of the discrete sets of fibers become underworked or overworked compared to the others. Overall shoulder strength is also associated with reduced occurrence of shoulder injury, something that I certainly want to avoid. That being said, I might also occasionally target one part of the shoulder more aggressively than others, but not to the detriment of still addressing the shoulder overall over time. To complete the deltoid work, I've been using the pec deck machine for the rear delts. Throughout the reverse pyramid count, I'll again focus on my best range of motion and resisting the negative. 
I find this exercise challenging for my shoulders since it seems like rear deltoid fatigue sets in rather quickly through the sets. So I'll engage some mental focus toward contracting the delts specifically at both ends of the movement, which not only assists with range of motion, but also helps me prevent the lift from becoming a bouncing or swinging momentum driven movement instead of a concentrated shoulder exercise. Shoulder strength in the Eagle could be easy to overlook since the shoulders aren't as evidently involved in maneuvering as the posterior chain and the spinal column and neck. Nevertheless, shoulders actually feature prominently in basic fighter maneuvering, but maybe not for reasons that people assume. In terms of G tolerance, it's actually important to learn to relax the shoulders as opposed to tensing them under G, since the goal of the anti-G straining maneuver is to push with the lower body and force blood back into the chest, arms, and ultimately the brain. Tense shoulders would inhibit that, and I don't enjoy passing out under G. But a majority of the additional gear that fighter pilots wear is installed in a survival vest that pulls on the shoulders. So in the high G environment, the shoulders have to withstand the increasing weight of that gear without giving up the capability of moving the arms around later. Even while under G and ultimately attempting to keep the shoulders relaxed, I have to be able to move my arms around at any moment to change the fight or just for leverage to keep sight of the adversary. All of those factors mean big strong shoulders are more than just aesthetically important. At the end of the day, I've got shoulder shrugs in the routine. For the same reasons that big strong shoulders and a solid neck are important to fighter pilots, the traps have to have some focus as well. Genetically, I think I got some decent androgen receptors in my traps and they seem to respond pretty well to training challenges, though I know some people who struggle with the exact opposite scenario. I train them for further size and not to lose their natural development. Other trainees might have to really throw them some extra attention to encourage their growth. I'll do my normal reverse pyramid with the dumbbells, really focusing on bringing the weights up while pulling the traps up and in for full range of motion and maximum tension. One technique here that I could employ more so than you see me doing is increasing shoulder abduction by bringing my arms further out away from my body to encourage more rotation and therefore even more trap target. Targeting. So that's something I have been implementing lately. After this exercise, the workout is done for the day. All right, that concludes the deployed workout series of videos. As a reminder, there's nothing special about the order of the days other than it allows me to take a break from powerlifting by splicing in cardio or high intensity interval training or CrossFit on two of the intervening days. I do have a sixth day option when, like I mentioned in one of the other videos, I go in and hop on the bike for a little more than a half hour or go for a run or something just to stay active. I also generally recommend working in activity wherever you can find it in ways that are enjoyable to you. If I can on those active recovery days, I, I like to play some sort of sport, some sort of pickup game with guys in the squadron, and just generally stay active, and then I will truly take a rest day at least one day of the week. On the rest day, it doesn't mean I'm completely sedentary, it just means I don't go out of my way to seek out extra exertion, but rather just focus on letting my body recover to start the cycle over again. With an aggressive split like this that takes up five or more days of the week, I find that it's very critical to to be prepared to introduce more rest when your body is demanding it. That doesn't mean crafting excuses to not go to the gym or to not be active, but as I'm tracking my progress, if I notice that the progress is stalling or if I'm noticing any regression in a certain area, I usually start to suspect that my recovery is not where it ought to be. And I may take an additional rest day, kind of shifting the cycle by one day of the week. But still, that's the whole series of workouts. This is the whole split that I've been executing for at least the first portion of this deployment. And I'll keep it this way for a while before I start to switch things up again. I really enjoyed making this series of videos to showcase what I'm doing and I hope to make many more to keep you updated on the different things that I'm trying in the gym, fighter pilot life in general, nutrition, and how I'm tailoring my workouts depending on my environment. So send me your questions and comments, keep giving me your feedback, it really helps me make videos that people want to see. And as always, thank you so much for watching.